What's up, you guys? This is your boy T Time Gaming, man. And if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit that like button. And also, as well, subscribe to the channel, man. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And today, fellas, we got what we've been asking for the full reveal of the new EA College Football gameplay, the most important thing. And this is going to be a longer video. I'm going to tell you now, but I'm going, not going to lie to you. You're going to enjoy every bit of it. I mean, in my personal opinion, I'll be giving you some information about the stuff that came out and also as well my opinion included in this as well. But I'm not going to lie. This trailer was amazing. Let's talk about it. Now, also, before we get started, too, man, remember, I am giving away two copies of the new EA College football game if we get to a thousand subscribers before July the 15th. Now, I think we're at like 815 at this moment. If we get to a thousand, I will do a video literally just for getting in the getaway, the giveaway. So please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I think we can get to a thousand probably in the next two weeks, to be honest with you. But let's do it. All right, so let's jump into the gameplay. As you're seeing on the screen right now, this is actual gameplay from today's video from EA, and man, it looks amazing. I am so excited about everything that's going on with EA right now with this game. You know, they answered the Madden reskin stuff almost immediately out the gate, and it, this game feels a lot faster. It feels a lot more wide open. It just feels a lot more concise, clear, not as cluttery as Madden. It just seems like a better game than Madden. It feels more wide open. So I like how EA kind of let this be their first deep dive. They heard the rumors. They heard everybody saying this is going to be a Madden reskin just for college teams. They addressed that almost immediately with the uh, Ollie Gordon run. I mean, it was amazing. I knew then, and when I seen, I think, Devin Neal, the Kansas running back, hop over that dude, I said, this is going to be a different game. I felt it almost immediately. I said, oh, yeah, this game is different. This is not feel the same. But we got a lot of details to go over today, y'all. But what I first want to start off with, and I'm going to be putting in several screenshots, I want to talk about some of the things that EA kind of really focused on in this game. All right, so the first thing they talked about was how Campus IQ – pretty much set up the college gameplay to have three different pillars. So the three different pillars that they're talking about that were pretty much the fundamentals of making this game was the All-22+, 134 ways to play, and also as well, Stories of Saturday. Talk about with the All-22+, it highlights the importance of the individual's players and their unique abilities. It also talks about pretty much the difference between the best talent in college football and also as well the worst talent in football. So, for example, if you're 85 and a guy is a 72 guarding you, you're going to feel that difference, which we're going to jump into that a little bit deeper later on in the video. Other pillar talked about 134 ways to play the game. From day one, our message was every team is somebody's favorite team. Proper representation, offensive schemes from even Air Force triple option to Air Ray at USC was the most utmost important to us. So pretty much they want to make sure that all these teams played the way that they play in real life, which is really dope, really nice, because it feels like in Madden, kind of even though there's different playbooks, it kind of feels like everybody pretty much plays the same, you know? The final pillar was the stories of Saturday. To seek to encapsulate the raw emotion of these student athletes as they perform under intense pressure in hostile environments. A true freshman is going to respond differently compared to a senior. So getting this right was really important. I think this is going to be a big thing in this game that experience is going to play a huge role, which it should. That's how it is in college football. Experience plays a huge role. It should play a huge role in the game as well. And I think they did a really good job kind of putting this in play and letting that be known. So the next thing that EA talked about in this Campus Huddle blog was stick work. And I think that's what people were the most impressed with, at least me. I was the most impressed with the stick work. And we're going to talk about it here a little bit. So pretty much with the stick work, they talked about essentially how they want the game to be able to play not only from north and south, but also east and west as well. Short form, what they stated in this whole, you know, um, blurb right here was pretty much this will provide a more in-depth and personalized gaming experience allowing players to mimic the styles of their favorite athletes or create their own unique approach to the game so this is going to be a really nice turn of events too as well so for example let's just use a guy like trevor Etienne, right i think he was in one of the clips where he juked out 
a um, Florida player and scored a touchdown. Those type of things are going to be in the game. If he's a very shifty running back in real life, that is also going to carry over into the game as well. It's going to be really important to use those abilities that you have, and we'll talk about the abilities in a few seconds here, but that's going to be another important part of this game. All right, so the next thing, which seems to be what they've really made a lot of emphasis on the last couple weeks, is the wear and tear system. So this is going to be really big for, like, running backs, um, linebackers, I would think, D linemen, sub packages. All this stuff is going to be play a huge role, especially if you're, like, dynasty players. This is going to play a big role. And I'm going to say this now, and I'm going to say this probably after reading this stuff. You are going to need to recruit depth. Depth is going to be a vital part of this game, especially in dynasty mode. You are going to need depth because they have honed in on this wear and tear thing now twice. They did it in the first reveal, and now they're doing it again in this one, which makes it pretty well known that is going to be a big part of this game. But let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so here's what they say about the welcome to the wear and tear. It says, wear and tear is a feature that takes the football gridiron to an unprecedented level of realism. This feature ensures every hit matters and not all hits are created equal. Wear and tear is a brand new unique damage system that adds a whole new layer of depth and strategy to your gameplay and to roster management. This is reflective of what you see on Saturdays. And that's very true. In college football, you see several different players coming. You see several different running backs per game. You see several different wide receivers per game. So this is going to be a big deal. And this is realistic. This happens a lot. You see a lot more auto sub packages in college football way more than you see in the NFL. So this is cool. They went on to pretty much also talk about how this wear and tear is designed to kind of uh, affect fatigue and damage your player's performance. So for example, if you know you throw the ball 40 times in a game, if you took some bad shots, your quarterback is not going to be as accurate and as healthy next week. He might not be 100% next week on health. He might be 90 because he's still recovering from the crazy game he had last week. So one thing I could automatically tell in this game is it is going to be very, very, very detailed. They also went on to say that pretty much this is going to take place in 100 and, and uh, this could take place in Dynasty and also what wrote the glory and they also went on to say is that pretty much gameplay components such as getting the ball out early and covering the ball are just as uh and just getting out of bounds are as important as ever wear and tear is on all 22 players on the field so every single person is going to have the ability to get hurt or to wear and tear which again realistic the next question probably is where can i see if my players fatigue so i'm gonna post a screenshot right here and you can actually see like phil moffa from clemson a couple guys here third event from ucla so you can see with phil moffa i'll use him for example he is up for high risk of injury because he's banged up in pretty much his whole entire body um so that's going to be a guy you're probably going to want to sub out so they pretty much went on to say you're going to be able to see this with pretty much like picture in pictures in the play call menu. Um, the depth chart will also show the wear and tear panel on the bottom right of the player card. Um, I mean, it's going to be pretty much, there's several different places. You can also manage your player's wear and tear in a dynasty player card as well. So you're going to be able to see this. What I am concerned about is how are the auto subs going to work in this game? Are they going to kind of like automatically do it? Are, are you going to have to set up auto subs for this to happen? Like if my player gets to 88, stand them up, I might want to pull them because they're really bad about that in Madden. So I wonder, is it going to be the same thing here as well? But again, as you can see with Phil Moffa, he's really hurt up right here. So he probably needs to come out because it's risk of injury, maybe even risk of fatigue and fumbling and stuff like that. Next, So next up, EA went on and talked about the option in college football. We already know nowadays options is a really big thing. It was a really big thing in the last game. But they even talked about RPOs as well. And as we know, option has always been kind of like a vital part of college football, I would say, for at least the last 14 or so years. So it was really interesting to hear what they had to say about this. All right, so next up, they talked about the option. Here. I'm going to post a screenshot here so you guys can see it. But pretty much they go over the three pillars again of what they kind of wanted to talk about with you know, the all 22, the 134 ways to play. And like I said, the, the sat stories of Saturday, they talked about that again. But they also talked about here about how, you know, the option offense has been a pivotal part of college football, which is what we just got done talking about. But the main thing I think I want to go over here was about 
how the option would run. So normally back in the day with NCAA 2014, if you want to pull the ball, you just did nothing. And if you wanted to give the ball, you would hit X or A, for example, back then if you were on Xbox 360. But now with this new set, it seems it's going to be the opposite. So if you want your quarterback to just pull, you're actually going to have to hit X or A now if you're on you know, PS5 or whatever. You're going to have to actually hit the button. If you want to just hand your ball off regularly to the running back, you do nothing. So it's actually the total opposite. So that might be confusing for some people. Also as well, there are RPOs in this game. They talked about that a little bit as well. So if you have an RPO in this game and your wide receiver is, I don't know, X, you'll just, if you see what you like, you go ahead and hit X, like kind of like what you do in Madden, because they have had RPOs in Madden the last couple of years. But I'm telling you now, options are a big part of college football. The one thing I am kind of concerned about, I hope it's not super OP. Um, they also talked about just the, you know, pitch, uh, read and pitch, you know, options and stuff like that, like what Air Force runs and stuff like that. They did a little bit of a deep dive on that. And they talked about how consistent it was. And how, you know, how it just feels a lot more smoother than how it's felt in Madden the last couple of years. Because they have the option in Madden too, but it's real quirky, real glitchy. And they kind of talked about how they toned in and fixed that. And I really believe them. I'm not going to lie. It seems a lot more concise. Right. So the next thing that EA talked about, again, this is a very detailed thing. That's one thing I could automatically see. So the next thing they talked about was base alignments and obviously being able to kind of hide your coverages when it comes to pre-snap. They talked about that a lot in here as well. Um, and it talked about having shells and not, I'm not talking about turtles, which pretty much, you know, a shell essentially is like a fake or like a cover up for what you're actually trying to run. So, for example, I'm going to post a screenshot here. It talks about how football problems require football solutions. With the removal of base alignment, we wanted to put our time and effort into improving alignment along with giving players the ability to disguise your coverage. This is in addition to a chess match to the core fans that the core fans have been asking for. In play calls, use an RS, while, so right stick, while in formation, review the commands of your secondary to position into a range of current, uh, currently disguised looks. These can range from a high pressure cover zero blitz to a back off cover four look. So again, you're going to be able to show something and then come out in something else. This is probably going to go back to composure and confidence of the opposite team, which we will talk about in a minute. So for example, if you are in a cover four, right, you can disguise yourself and look as if you're in a cover one or a cover two. Now you can do this in Madden too a little bit, but it's not as crisp as what this EA college football game is proclaiming it's going to be. So I think this is a really good look for EA. And again, I can just tell they put a lot of effort and details into this game. And I love what I'm seeing so far. All right. So another big thing in today's news was the abilities. That is correct. So there won't be X factors and stuff like that, but there will be abilities in this game. And EA went on to talk about the abilities in this game. So I'm going to put this screenshot here of what they said. And then I'm actually going to show you some of Travis Hunter's abilities that was also put on by EA. It says, in College Football 25, we are introducing 80 abil abilities, the majority of which are completely new to the football gaming space. These abilities are purely situational boost and there are no guarantees which we love to see that because we know how x factors are in madden abilities are categorized into two groups physical and mental each of these groups is further divided into four tiers so similar to like nba 2k if you play that game you have bronze which is the lower level silver is the next gold and then also as well platinum which is the highest level the most uh, a player can have at any given time, is five physical and three mental abilities. So eight abilities at all can be going on at most. So they can only have eight abilities or, you know, eight badges, quote unquote, if that's what people want to say. But again, this is really unique. And I'm actually going to post up the screenshot of Travis Hunter right here. And as you can see, he has several different abilities, and I'm telling you now, he's going to be OP. So, for example, in this screenshot here, he has fan favorite. He's going to be able to increase imposure, uh, composure at home games, pretty much. Uh, best friend, quarterback composure, gains a first down catch, so he's going to be able to get open and catch the ball. Clear-headed, again, 
protection from composure loss. So he has several different things that he's going to be able to do in here. And it talks about his other abilities as well. I'm telling you now, man, he talks. And so those are his mental uh, abilities. He also has physical abilities as well. So well, here are the physical abilities. So he has some physical abilities as well. Short hands, 50-50, double dip, layout, recoup. Um, he has several different abilities here. Like, again, just EA just did a really good job with these ability tabs. And I'm not going to lie, man. I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing so far. But this is what's going to play a role in the abilities. Now, I like how they said this does not mean it's a guarantee. Because you know when somebody has an X Factor, it's a guarantee pretty much. But this looks really good. And also as well, I think... Travis Hunter's face scan looks pretty good as well. So next up, man, one of the other things they talked about was pre-snap recognition. And this is another thing that goes back to that confidence and composure, which we're going to jump into later. It says, can you see everything at the line of scrimmage like an experienced senior? What about if the freshman is playing on the road in front of 100,000 screaming fans? We have introduced a new pre-snap recognition feature designed to bring a level of clarity to the line of scrimmage that reflects the experience level of the player controlling the game. For instance, a freshman player may not be a, 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 be able to identify who is coming to blitz or what shell is at the line of scrimmage compared to what a seasoned senior would be able to see. So again, this kind of goes back to home field advantage. This kind of goes back to confidence and composure. And we might just jump into confidence and composure next because that seems to be a thing that's going to be a huge deal in this game. So next up, we're going to just jump into it. Confidence and composure has probably been one of the most important things I've noticed since kind of going over this. They keep reiterating this and they keep going back to it. So it's got to be an important element of this game. So I'm going to post a screenshot here. They talk about confidence and composure. In College Football 25, the game isn't only about who's the most skilled player on the field, but it's also about who can maintain their composure in high-pressure situations. Confidence and comp uh, composure is about moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, reflecting the real-life ups and downs of these student-athletes as each player unfolds, just like we see on Saturdays. Players can get hot or cold depending on the outcome of each play. And this is so true. Sometimes you can see a player get hot or have a player get cold in a game in real life. We see that happen all the time. You're going to see freshmen come in and be rattled if they're playing at LSU at night in a big game. He's going to look a little different. He's going to feel a little different. That's the way it should be. They went on to also kind of talk about that. It says experience plays a critical role in confidence and composure. A freshman player who is a little bit more a volatile swing compared to a seasoned senior. As a crowd, as the crowd level increases, the effects on players' confidence in, in, uh, increases progressively. This emphasizes the importance of composure in the digital uh, gridiron, makes it a, uh, making it a crucial factor to consider for every play in every game. No different than what we see on Saturdays with young starters, it is important to control the game and keep the chains moving. Now, guys, I'm going to get into the opinion part of this now. I think this is telling you that the transfer portal is going to be extremely important in this game. You are going to need guys that are already experienced in this game. Now, Dabo Sweeney probably don't want to hear that at this point, but I'm just telling you, the transfer portal is going to be important in this game, and you are going to need it. Because if you come out there with a bunch of freshmen and a bunch of sophomores that have not touched the field, you might see a problem in this game from what they're kind of saying. And I could see that happening, to be honest, because they don't have the experience. They haven't been on the field much. But if you have a player that has maybe played some college football before for a year or two and has started and he comes to your squad, that's going to be a little different. I think that experience and older guys are going to play a huge role in this game. All right, so next up, we're going to talk about the revamp pass, and they talk about that as well. They say quarterback, the iconic position in football. Our main objective in the past game was to hone in on the art of layering the ball. This includes everything from dropping the ball in a bucket to your tight end between the linebacker and the uh, free safety to throw a bullet uh, on the 12-yard line dig. Uh, these new trajectories change, changes really allow you to throw wide receivers open. So again, this sounds kind of similar 
to the precision passing, which I actually kind of like on Madden, to be honest. It's one of the few things that I think Madden has actually did kind of decent with, honestly. So I'm not really mad at that if that is the case. But you can see in some of the videos, man, these quarterbacks are layering the ball, which I really like. And I thought that was really impressive, to be honest with you. All right, so they went on to talk about it even more. They said, to accomplish this, we've increased the variance of left stick pass lead intent, changing our inaccuracy of mislocations, and overhauling our pass trajectories. The biggest change you'll you will feel immediately is how we've uh, evolved the uh, concept of throw power now. Throw power doesn't simply uh, refer to just the distance of throwing the ball, but how hard you can throw. You often hear color commentators discuss quarterback's arm strength in the context of 10, 15-yard bullets and hooks and dig routes rather than 60-yard passes. And that's so true, you know, especially in nowadays game. All of that is discovered. So I definitely like how they did that. They definitely have, like how about they talked about like enhancing balance as well and maintaining balance between just bullet throws and, and long deep pass and stuff like that. I think they did a really good job just being very detailed throughout this whole process. So the next thing they talked about, and they showed a video clip of this too, and it was really amazing, was introducing the Switch Stick. I love this a lot, man. They say right here, have you ever found yourself making adjustments to uh, to defend your opponent's passing game? All to try and stop the same pass play from being used repeatedly against your defense. Get ready for uh, control you've never had before, pretty much. We're introducing a Switch Stick. Uh, a simple yet powerful tool to make the defense switch more compelling, which we really need that. When you're lurking in pass coverage, flick the right stick. So the same stick you hit hit stick with, which I'm going to talk about that in a second. This will directly switch you to the other cover defender according to the direction of your flick. Thus allowing you to play multiple levels of the field at an instant. I love this. All that glitchy stuff that people do on Madden where you can't even get your defense set and they just run a play and you're stuck on your DN or D-lineman, yeah, that's over. You can't do that in this game because now what I can do is I can just flick my right analog stick and get close to wherever you're throwing that ball to and make a play on the ball. I thought the switch assist in and Madden has been trash for like the last two or three seasons, especially this year. This year seems like it's been the worst. But with this, this is a game changer. This is a big game changer right here. And I like this a lot. It's going to be able to change a lot of stuff on defense. And it's going to allow you to have more control. And that's what some people have been wanting on Madden. This is going to allow you to have more control on defense. And I'm not going to lie, I love it. So next, they talked about playbooks and team styles. They said this year there's over 1,500 new plays, more than 50 uh, uh, formations, also like 134 teams, but they keep bringing that up. So they want to make you know that there's different plays for different for every single team. Um, and pretty much in addition, there's team playbooks, college football 25, also your regular playbooks that, you know, are not team specific, you know, um, on, uh, air raid, multiple pistol, you know, so on and so forth. But pretty much they're talking about how you're able to, you know, kind of mix and match these playbooks as well if you wanted to eventually, which I like that a lot as well. So if you wanted to get customizable, which they talked about customization a lot in this game, you can do that now with going on ahead and going in there. And, you know, if you want to have some air raid elements to your offense and also some, you know, um, option elements of your offense, you can do that now. Um, so I think that's going to be really cool to add in. And they talked about the different game plays in here as well. They talked about how the game actually gives you a chance if you want to do like a double reverse. You can either decide to do the double reverse or just do one reverse and call it a day. That's completely up to you. You have to read the defense and see what they're doing. So I thought that was pretty clutch as well. But again, man, as you can already see, the details in this game are good. There's two more tidbits I want to announce. You can see on the screenshot here, they talks about the tempo game. We all know in college football, tempo is a big thing. They talk about the no huddle, but they now have this new term called turbo type tempo and it both aims to speed up the gameplay so in the no huddle tempo all players rush back to the line offering the traditional you know regular tempo although there is no huddle audibles to play within your personnel group are still possible meanwhile the turbo tempo encapsulates a rapid rush to the line style of play uh, think back to the blur offense back in Oregon back in the day you are essentially trading abilities to hot routes and audible at the line so, again, similar to what Oregon used to run back in the day, I think that when they had, like, Dixon and all that back in the day, 
Um, so yeah, man, similar to that, I think that's going to be really cool as well. And then also as well, another thing here, I'm going to post a screenshot here. They talked about the field goal kicking stuff too. There is a new kicking meter that I think people are going to like. It does seem to be a little bit tougher though to actually do. Um, so pretty much it looks like the kicking meter is kind of like in the middle here, as you can see in the screenshot. So it is a little different, man. But again, everything looks really impressive. I really like it. Um, and man, I just can't not, I, I can't wait till July 15th, bro. That's what I'm waiting on at this point. July 15th needs to get here expeditiously. So that pretty much concludes all the big information that came out today. There's a little tidbits inside that campus huddle thing. So you can definitely go check that out. There was some stuff about coaching, you know, coaches having abilities and stuff like that, which I think they're going to deep dive into that more in the dynasty time, which they pretty much said that, which is why I didn't really talk about it much today. So I think they are going to end up talking about that in a few weeks. So I do think they're going to be more deep dives than just this. So I would expect that probably the next, I don't know, two, three weeks here. Um, but yeah, man, I'm super excited about this game. Again, just my own personal opinion on the trailer before we get out of here. That to me was the best college football trailer or fo football game trailer I had ever seen in my life, at least. I can't speak for nobody else, but that was a really good trailer. And I'm really impressed. I think EA kind of answered all the questions about is it going to be, you know, a, a Madden reskin and stuff like that. I think they've kind of answered that question at this point. I don't really think nobody should be questioning them if this is going to be a Madden reskin. If the game sucks, it's going to be from a for a completely different reason than it being just like Madden. I can tell you that now. But to be honest, I don't think it's a Madden reskin. I think this is going to be a really good football game. And I'm not going to lie, chat. I'm so excited and so ready. I know this video was long, so I appreciate y'all sticking in here with me. Once again, like this video to get the YouTube algorithm working for your boy. And also, as well, subscribe to the channel. We are trying to get this thing to a 1,000 subscribers before the game comes out. But we're like a month and a half away, man. So we're right here at it, man. Continue to show love and support. And we will see y'all on the next video and when any other information about the EA College football game drops.